Doctor Who will soon be returning to our screens, with Jodie Whittaker taking over as the 13th Doctor. The casting of a female Doctor is probably the single biggest thing to happen to the show since the first regeneration, way back in 1966. So, what better time to look back at each of the Doctor's eras so far? Join me for the trip of a lifetime as I recap the very best of each era, revealing some of my favourite Doctor episodes and moments along the way. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I'm a big fan of the Capaldi era. If you're new to my channel, then I'll tell you now that you're unlikely to find a bigger supporter of the Twelfth Doctor and his era than me. In direct contrast to Matt Smith, Peter Capaldi was the oldest actor to play the Doctor, taking on the role at the age of 55, the same age that William Hartnell was when he started playing the Doctor. Being the oldest actor to play the Doctor gave Capaldi the advantage of being one of the most versatile and experienced actors to take on the role. He gave the Doctor a gravitas not really seen since the show's early years, taking influence from the Doctors that he grew up with, while simultaneously giving an original, unique performance. With an older actor playing the Doctor, the team took the opportunity to shake things up a bit for Capaldi's debut series. The Twelfth Doctor was a much more complex incarnation than previous Doctors. He was more alien, more unapproachable, more unpredictable, and in a sense, more unlikable, sometimes coming across as downright rude. Yet as his era progressed, it became clear that the Twelfth Doctor's abrasive exterior was just a mask, or as Madame Vastra might say, a veil, under which the Doctor's benevolent qualities still remained. Indeed, his actions were often well-intentioned, even if his behaviour sometimes seemed slightly dubious or morally ambiguous. A good example of this can be seen in Mummy on the Orient Express, when the Doctor explains to Clara that sometimes the only choices you have are bad ones, but you still have to choose. As a character, the Twelfth Doctor appeals to me because he's not infallible. Over the course of the three series that make up his era, this Doctor progresses and develops, perhaps more than any other Doctor. In Series 8, he is just regenerated, and is going through something of a midlife crisis, asking Clara, am I a good man? But by Series 10, he's confident enough in himself and his beliefs to give the Master and Missy a lecture about kindness. And that's not forgetting his 10-minute monologue about the futilities of war in the Zygon inversion. But ultimately, he does get things wrong along the way. He's rude to Clara throughout the first half of Series 8, and then abandons her completely in Kill the Moon. In Hellbent, he's vengeful and arrogant, breaking the laws of time in order to bring Clara back from the dead, and shooting a fellow Time Lord. A recurring theme across this era is the Doctor being put in difficult situations, and having to choose between the lesser of two evils. In Death in Heaven, he must decide whether finding out more about the Cybermen's plan is worth Danny Pink's life, or afterlife, while the Series 9 opener sees the Doctor having to choose whether or not to let a young Davros live. In most of these cases, the Doctor just does his best given the respective circumstances, but the point is, things are rarely black and white. A big theme of the Twelfth Doctor's era is moral ambiguity, explored most prominently through two characters, the Doctor himself and his arch-nemesis Missy. Well, she couldn't very well keep calling herself the Master. I find Missy one of the most fascinating and best realised incarnations of the Master, because she isn't 100% evil. In this female form, Missy is more morally ambiguous than her previous incarnations, and instead of just wanting to rule the world, she simply wants the Doctor to be her friend again. That's why she teams up with the Cybermen in the Series 8 finale, in order to give the Doctor an army, his birthday present. In the Series 9 opener, you could be forgiven for thinking Missy was an ally, or even one of the Doctor's new companions. Yes, her behaviour in that story is questionable, especially her treatment of Clara. But ultimately, she is part of the narrative because she's the Doctor's oldest friend, and the recipient of his confession dial. Even by putting Clara inside a Dalek casing, she is, in a very twisted way, trying to make the Doctor see that she is his friend, not his enemy. This plot thread comes to a head in Series 10, 
with Missy imprisoned in a vault under the Doctor's care, on the condition that she will mend her ways and become good. And despite all the odds, in the series 10 finale, she decides to contradict her previous self and stand with the Doctor. Or at least she tries to. In my opinion, Missy's character arc is one of the most interesting things to happen to the Master in the character's history, and is definitely one of the best things about this era. Like the Twelfth Doctor, she undergoes a very clear transformation over the course of this era, turning from evil to good, with a couple of false starts along the way. Michelle Gomez is fantastic in the role, and her chemistry with Peter Capaldi helps make the relationship between the Doctor and Missy all the more convincing. I will, very briefly, put in a word or two about the companions that join the Twelfth Doctor on his travels, all three of whom I thought were brilliant. Free from the demands of the Impossible Girl story arc, Clara Oswald became a more fully rounded character in Series 8. She had a thirst for adventure unlike that of any previous companion, a plot thread that was brought to a satisfying but devastating head in the Series 9 finale. Pearl Mackey's Bill Potts reinvigorated the show in Series 10, providing a much needed breath of fresh air. And I'm glad we got to see more of Matt Lucas as Nardol in this series too. His strange, alien quality and impeccable comic timing were vital parts of the series' success. I could go on about why I love the Twelfth Doctor's era all day. I really, really could. Out of all of the eras of Doctor Who so far, it's the one that's clicked with me the most. Yet I often find myself having to defend it to other fans. Peter Capaldi's portrayal of the Doctor was truly revolutionary. Sometimes less reassuring than previous Doctors, but deep down, just as well-intentioned and kind. Moffat and Capaldi worked together to take the character of the Doctor to new places. And yes, they took some risks. This is an era that's perhaps not quite as accessible as the ones that preceded it. But it was bold, brave and brilliant. And in its exploration of big ideas such as friendship, death, loss and morality, it proved that Doctor Who can, and in my opinion should, be challenging. Though it may not be to everyone's taste, the Twelfth Doctor's era is a run that I think is one of the very best in the show's history. So which are my favourite stories from this era? Listen. This is a defining story for the Twelfth Doctor. Coming fairly early on in his run, Listen shows us a Doctor who is still very unsure about himself, hypothesising about the nature of fear. As Moffat's chamber piece for Series 8, it's a very character-focused episode that features plot strands involving Clara, Danny and the Doctor, and their respective pasts, presents and futures, and ties them together in a beautiful final montage. Mummy on the Orient Express Jamie Matheson's first script for the show is a real hit. It's murder mystery plot with a claustrophobic but budget-friendly setting and a truly horrific monster, manages to capture the essence of Doctor Who from the word go. Many would say that this is a defining story for the Twelfth Doctor and his relationship with Clara. It gives us a proper insight into how his mind works when he's under pressure but still trying to do his best and save as many people as he can. Overall, a modern classic. The Magician's Apprentice slash The Witcher's Familiar the iconic Series 9 opener sees the return of Davros and Missy, whilst introducing the Sonic Shades and tackling big ideas about friendship along the way. It's one of those stories where things are far from black and white. There are blurred lines between good and evil, and friends and enemies. In the end, this story decides that mercy is all that matters, leaving us with a powerful final shot of the Doctor and the young Davros holding hands peacefully. Face the Raven slash Heaven Sent slash Hell Bent. The Series 9 finale is probably my favourite Twelfth Doctor story, and yes, I'm including Hell Bent there. This epic story explores ideas of death, loss, memory, and friendship across three incredibly varied episodes. In Face the Raven, we get one of the show's most heartbreaking companion departures. Heaven Sent is an exceptional character piece and study of grief and Hellbent's a fitting conclusion to the Doctor and Clara's time together. It's an example of big, bold, brave storytelling, and isn't that what Doctor Who is all about? World Enough in Time slash The Doctor Falls. Another example of stellar Doctor Who. As the story that draws the Capaldi era to a close, 
The series 10 finale is everything that I could have hoped for and more. Eerie and intriguing in its first half, epic, yet strangely intimate in its second. This story shows the full range that Doctor Who has to offer, and it does so in style. And could my favourite 12th Doctor moment be anything other than his speech from the Doctor Falls? It's the 12th Doctor at his most confident and assured. There's no more questioning whether or not he is a good man. It's a defining moment for this incarnation, as he makes a desperate plea to the Master and Missy to stand with him. Peter Capaldi acts his socks off in this scene, giving what is probably his best performance as the Doctor. It's a raw, honest and emotional reaffirmation of the Doctor's core beliefs, doing what is right, decent, and above all, what's kind. What do you love about the 12th Doctor's era? Be sure to post your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching the best of Doctor Who. I really hope you've enjoyed this series, and I'll see you very soon for some Series 11 reviews.